In this video, I'm going to be going over scroll animation, and I try to make this video as short and easy as possible, so make sure to watch all of it. And this is what we're going to make, so we can see the simple first animation. When we scroll down, this is going to appear, and these two are going to just slide in. And I'm going to also be going over the importance of having your section appear in each element. So we can see that this one barely works. But while the above section, we can see that each element is independent of the other one. And that's because I have the animation on each of these elements instead of the whole section. So to learn more about it, make sure you watch the whole video. And before we get started, make sure you like this video, subscribe, comment down below if you have any questions. But now, let's get started. So just like always, I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to do it with my terminal. So I'm going to write mk dir scroll animation and then i'm going to open it with vs code so i'm going to write code scroll animation and press on enter and i'm going to create an html file a css file and a javascript file in the index.html file i'm going to create the bone structure rename the title to scroll animation and in the body i'm going to start by making a few sections so let's make the first one and it's going to have an h1 and a paragraph so i'm just going to auto complete the text here and i'm going to make a paragraph and i'm going to use lorem to generate some random text so i'm going to write lorem 10 and then i'm going to add a class of animate to each of these sections so i'm just going to add it to the first one and then copy and paste this a few times and i'm going to change the text and this is what my html looks like after doing that i'm going to add my css file in here and then also the javascript file and don't forget to add the defer over here. And I'm going to go to my CSS file. In the body, I'm going to set the background color to be dark. So I'm just going to use 333. I'm going to set the color to white. And I'm going to center out each section. So I'm going to write display grid, justify item center, align item center. And I'm also going to set a height of 100 view height. And I'm going to go back to my index.html file and open it with live server to see what it looks like. And I have to fix something, so I have to go back to my CSS file and change align items to content and also write text align center. And now this is what it should look like. So this is going to be the first section, the second one, the third one, and then the fourth one. Now we can go back to the very top and go to our JavaScript file. The first thing that we're going to do is select all of our sections. So let's make a variable for that. And I'm going to call it sections. That's going to equal to document .query selector. We can select it by using section or by the class, so I'm just going to do both. Next thing is going to be to add an observer, which I'm going to go over what it does in a second. So let's make it first. I'm going to write const observer, which equals to new intersection observer. And in here, we're going to have a callback function. So here we're going to get our entries. And then in here, now we're going to write entries dot for each entry. And so here we're going to be checking if we're intersecting the entry. So if entry dot is intersecting and if that's true what we're going to do is we're going to go to the entry dot target which is going to be the element we're going to go to the class list and we're going to add a class of show else if we're not intersecting we're going to write entry dot target dot class list dot remove and in here we're going to write show so pretty much what's going to be happening is when our window is going to be intersecting with each section, we're going to be adding a class of show. And then when we stop intersecting a section, we're going to be removing that class. So now we have to go back to our CSS and add a few classes. So the first one is going to be hidden. And here we're going to start by setting the opacity to zero. And let's also add a transition of all. And let's do one second for now. And then we're going to have one of show, which is going to set the opacity to one. Now let's go back to our JavaScript file and we're going to do two things. So the first thing that we have to do is select each section. And for that, we're going to use for each. So sections dot for each section, we're going to add a class of hidden to each of our section so that it's going to set the opacity to zero. And the next thing is we have to use observer to observe each of our sections here, which is going to give us the result that we want. So now when we go back, we can see that our animation works and when we scroll down it kind of works but we have to scroll really fast to see it so let's go to our elements and we can see that every time we intersect each of these sections is going to add a class of show and it's also going to remove it as we can see over here so one thing that we can do is go to our section here and set the height to a bit bigger so that if we go down here we can see that it's still showing the section even though we're not seeing the elements or there's another way to solve this, which is the better way. But before we do that, I'm going to add a few other animations. So the first one is going to be slide. And to do that, I'm going to add another class. So let's go down here. I'm going to write hidden dot slide. 
And then let's also do show dot slide. And what we're going to be doing here is setting the opacity to zero. And then we're also going to set the transform translate X or Y to negative 100. And then when we show it, we want to set it to zero. Now, if we go back here and add a class of slide, we can see that works. So we can see that it's going to be sliding from our left to right. And another small nice touch we can add to our animation is add a blur. So to do that, we're going to write filter blur and we can set that to five pixels for now. And then down here, we can set that back to zero. And now when we reload, we can see that it's going to go from pretty blurry to not blurry at all. And I'm also actually going to change the font family here. So there it is. And I'm going to zoom in a bit so that we can see this much better. But now the problem would be that if you wanted to animate each of these objects separately, you wouldn't be able to because we're using the section. So to fix that, what we can do is we can firstly remove the section from here and then go to our index.html file and what I'm going to be doing is adding a class of animate to the objects that I wanted to animate so in this case I'm going to add animate slide to our h1 here and then for the paragraph I'm just going to animate it normally so now if we go back here it's not going to be a section anymore but I'm just going to keep it and now when we go back and reload we can see that nothing happens so we have to fix the error here and that's because I forgot to add a dot here before the class. But now if we reload, we can see that we're going to have two different animations here. And the cool thing would be that if I go up a little bit, we can see that only our first element is going to show up. And then if we scroll up a bit more, we can see that our second element, because now it's looking when the window is intersecting the elements and not the section. So now the animation is going to be more precise and you can also animate this however you want to. So if you really want to change the direction sides, what you could do is have, let's say the H1 slider from the left and then the other one from the right. So let's do that. I'm going to add a attribute here, which is going to be data direction and you can set that to whatever you want. This one is going to be right and the default one's going to be left. So I'm just not going to write anything in there. We can go back to here. And now if I write data direction and set that to right, we can remove the negative and then we can keep everything here the same, but just add this in here. And now we can see that they're both going to be coming from different sides. And if I actually open this and scroll up a bit, we can see that we're going to have the first one show in. And as soon as we see the other one, the animation is going to start and work. So this is all up to you. You can animate this however you want to. You can even add a rotation if you want to. It doesn't really matter. You can always change all of this. So you can set other properties here. So contrast, you can grayscale it if you want to. I'm going to go back to blur and we can even set this to 50 pixels if we really want to. So now we can see that it should be really blurry. And as always, this is going to be the end of this video and I try to make it as simple as possible and as short as possible. So I really hope that you enjoyed it. And so make sure to leave a like if you like this video, subscribe to this channel so that I don't miss upcoming videos, comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions and hopefully see you in the next video.